Hello, and welcome to the Change Gang Podcast with me, your host, Laura Ordeal. I'm here to help you hold on to your sanity and your soul as you move through big change in your life. I'm here to guide you, inform you, and hopefully help you to triumph over trauma and the long list of symptoms that come along with it. This podcast series is to bring knowledge, share stories, and open up conversation around hope for those of you that suffer with the difficulties that present themselves in your life from diagnosed or undiagnosed trauma. Labeled or not, I know you need help, and so do those that have graciously taken the time to have these conversations with me. So let's get to it. Welcome to the Week Change Gang. I am happy to have Kimberly Carter Page here with me today. And I want to preface this with a little bit of a warning for anyone listening, just in case. Maybe you need to listen to this privately or maybe you don't want to listen to it. But we're going to talk about sexual trauma today. So I wanted you to be aware of that before we dive in. And Kimberly, thank you for coming to have this conversation. I think it's an important one. Thank you advising me. Absolutely. So this is a big one and I haven't actually talked with anyone. We skirted around the issue a lot, talked about some abuse, talked about some things, but we haven't dove into this particular situation. So I do want to talk about it. I want to talk about it openly. And I am so happy that you help people through such a difficult, difficult situation. Was that a direction that you headed into for yourself or did you find that you started attracting and helping those? people and of course by word of mouth that happened more often yeah i started attracting people but also with hypnotherapy often the subconscious mind will shut down memories that are too traumatic and when i had people that had disassociation which meant that they were switching from personalities that's always a sign that there's some severe trauma in their past because they've had to leave that personality and shut it off because it's too hard to face and i've had a lot of men that in their 60s maybe watching something on TV or seeing something in a newspaper that may have triggered a memory that they didn't even know they had all that time in their life and they just become this completely shut down person that's just crying all the time that just can't cope with life and looking in is this real or is this just in my imagination or what's happening and so with hypnotherapy the beauty of it is is we can take you down to such a level that you don't relive the trauma in the way that you would in counseling where you're talking about it and re-traumatizing we can just go with the feelings you have in your body we can just have a brief look at what you felt was happening and then we can deal with it without re-going over exactly what happened and in some cases the subconscious mind is so caring and so gentle that I will have clients that will snore through (laughs) the whole going back in time where the triggers were so on a conscious level they're not even aware they're dealing with it but the subconscious is and then when they come out of the hypnosis they can feel the shift that something has changed but they haven't had to go back into it and it's just as we tell the subconscious it is just a memory it's a file within your computer of a brain that is sitting there that doesn't necessarily need to be opened it can just be deleted so like on your computer you've got all these different files You don't have to open and look at them if you know that that file is something you don't need anymore. You don't have to read through every single detail before you press the delete button. So it's being able to deal with all that stuff in a safe way, which hypnotherapy can do. The only issues we have that are harder is when there is a strong memory. So somebody that has been trafficked from a very early age, right from five onwards, and then you say to them, I'm going to take you to a safe place and they say well I don't know what safe is and so we have to find a way of allowing the subconscious mind to open up a safe place because they're so used to someone coming in the door they're so used to not being able to lock because someone will be knocking or someone will be telling them to unlock it or they just don't feel safe anywhere and so when we deal with the subconscious mind and say that you can find a safe place within your mind. That is the start of them being able to let go, to deal with the trauma. But safety has got to happen first. And it's really sad that there's a lot of people out there that have never experienced safe. 
And so once they do, it really is life changing. I'm curious about this because I want to know too, when you are dealing with someone who has never known a safe space, do you help them create that? Or do you just let the subconscious, do you just guide them and reassure them that there is that safe place and they're able to create that themselves? No, we create it together. So we just say that right here, right now, at this very moment, you're perfectly safe, perfectly fine. And so there is always a moment when they're safe. And when they use that moment to go into their mind and create a safe place in meditation, then they can create that place however they want and nobody gets to go there without their permission. And that can be anywhere. And if it starts in my therapy room, then that's great. That is great. Wow. So when you're dealing with people, this is a sensitive thing for anyone because oftentimes people will have a sense. Like you said, maybe they've watched a movie, maybe they've seen a scene, maybe words got mentioned, or maybe they just have something coming up and they don't understand, they don't know why. And they're afraid to find out why because it might have that inkling and they'll go, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. And the wonder of what you do and what I do is that when you take them there and the subconscious mind, like you said, is so gentle there that it will go in and clarify and acknowledge and come into awareness in a way that clears that, but does not bring that back to them. I want to make that really clear for people listening, that that you don't go back. I know Sarah, who we are common friends with, has mentioned in the work, and I'm curious with you too, and for me, I'm going to say the same thing, that anyone that I've dealt with has never gone back back and seen themselves in a sexual abuse situation. So that has never occurred. Has that ever occurred in anyone that you've worked with? Only if they've wanted to take themselves back there. Sometimes when somebody has had an abuser and they're full of hate, they're full of anger, they're full of fear, and they want to say something to that abuser, they want to take back control and power, then we will allow them to go back, but with a big, thick, bulletproof glass screen between them where they're in control and they can say exactly what they want to say. And that is very liberating because the reason that they're suffering is because they are powerless. And so you need to give them back that power. You need to say you're not powerless. We're going to put you in this situation where you're completely safe and you say and do what you want to do. And because it's in your mind, no one needs to know what you're saying and what you're doing. You can do whatever it is you want to do to clear that, to feel that you have had your say, that you're no longer powerless that this person has no control over you and so we work that way if they are aware of what's happened if they're not and like you said before they just have a feeling I say to them why would you want to open that there's no need so what we do is we go with the feeling what is the feeling where is it in your body give it a shape give it a color is it light or is it heavy so we literally really focus on that feeling and then we ask the subconscious mind to go back to the very first time they felt that feeling and we deal with the feeling in that situation. We ask them to rescue that child, that teenager, that adult or whatever, and bring them out of that feeling. I ask them to think of something that they love and it could be a dog or it could be an animal or a child or something that they love absolutely unconditionally. And we replace that traumatic feeling in the body with the feeling they get with the love. And so we delete that other one and reinstall the original one. And so we just deal with that rather than going and looking at what happened. Happened because why would you want to visit it? The subconscious has shut it down to protect you. Right. And I think that's something that I want people to be very aware of is it's not going to go open this door and show you the scene that's going to bring all of that horribleness into your life now. That's absolutely not what's going to happen. And just like you said, with trying to do that through other ways of doing therapy, that could happen that way where it does yeah. re-empathize you or opens the door to trauma. And then you have to deal with this big mess that's landed on you. And that does not happen in this process. And I find that reassuring and wonderful because that is such a thing. It's such a violation. It's such a difficult thing that nobody wants to, if you don't know that, you don't want to all of a sudden experience that. But if it's holding you back, you want to clear the situation. And there is a way to do that. Absolutely. 
people finding that it's difficult to maintain relationships is when they get close, they sabotage it. So if you're self-sabotaging relationships or you're constantly choosing narcissistic relationship, there is normally a reason for that. There is a program that needs to be deleted or removed or rewritten because everybody deserves to be in a loving, caring relationship. Everybody deserves to feel loved and to be loved. But if you're resonating out a I don't deserve or it's not safe, then you're going to self-sabotage those. And a lot of people don't know why they self-sabotage. They just, I just seem to pick the wrong partner all the time or I've had so many partners and it just never lasts. And so there's a reason for that. And once you realize that you're not doing it deliberately, your subconscious is protecting you, then we can look at why that is. We can then reassure the subconscious that actually you're not there anymore. You've grown, you've got more resilience and you're not powerless anymore. You can actually choose someone that is going to treat you with the respect that you deserve. That's true. And I think, I don't know if you've seen it happen. I've definitely seen it happen where people, and I think this happens out there more often than we realize, the people who have had sexual abuse or who have been raped or in any kind of a sexual misconduct situation, they oftentimes to begin with, their mind kind of shuts it off. Someone who will say, well, it wasn't rape or it wasn't really abuse or it was yeah. just this or it was just that. And there's this justification process that goes through as a protection mechanism. And oftentimes I think kids will not even realize they don't have the connection of what happened to them as being quote unquote sexual abuse until the light bulb moment. And it's like, oh, and then all of a sudden it's connected. And that's when things have to really be dealt with and worked through if that connection process happens. But oftentimes people won't even be aware because their mind has that little veil, that little protector up that says, no, no, that wasn't you, but you're experiencing anger, difficult relationships, physical issues. Maybe you're going through depression or you're going through anxiety and having panic attacks or whatever else it is that is sometimes people will drive themselves so hard into success or into something because they need that focus to not look at the other things. Yeah. But if you're coming across the stumbling blocks, it's a great time to just see if there's anything there to see. And, and it won't be like you're looking at a crystal ball and you have to look at it. It's just going and clearing. Might not be anything sexual. It might be that you lost your dog when you were 18 months old and it was this horrible traumatic experience in your life. And you don't even remember it because you were 18 months old. But there was this anchor placed at that point and you need to do it. But there's the possibility if you have that inkling that it is something. Thing. And it does seem to be addressed and dealt with. And you're right, because sometimes the subconscious mind sees things very differently. I had two clients, a male and female, and they were brother and sister. And the sister came to me and said, my mum and dad didn't love me very much because I was stuffed in my own room. I was lonely. I didn't have anyone to play with. And my mum took me everywhere, whereas my brothers were allowed to go and do things and they would go to each other's houses and play. But mum wanted me with her all the time and because she didn't trust me. And then when I spoke to her brother, he said, oh, my sister was the golden child. Mum took her everywhere. We were just left to play and we didn't have our own space. I constantly had my brother. And so you think both of them could see a trauma side <laughs> and the parents weren't necessarily doing anything wrong, but it's how they perceived it as growing up and it affected them. So again, sometimes it's just looking at, is that true? Because when you look at it from an adult perspective, maybe you got it wrong. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh yes. I think perspective and coming into an awareness changes everything. Thing. And we often can't do that until we do it at that subconscious level. And sometimes people remember it and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they come out just like you said and they tell you the story about this whole thing that happened in their life. And sometimes they come out and they're like, they snored through it and they don't remember anything, but they know they have that feeling something's changed. I love that. So you work with all kinds of people and you mentioned actually someone who had been sex trafficked and that's got to be such a lifelong thing and again no safety ever not knowing what that's like and obviously you've worked with her I don't know if you've gone through the process and she's doing better or if you're kind of in the middle of the process can you share anything about an outcome so far with her 
I've got more than one. Some of them have moved on and they're doing really, really well. And again, they tend to be work then with other people. They always go into some humanitarian type work because they realize that's what they've experienced. They can justify coming through the other side because then they can help other people. I've got some that I'm still working with, but again, the amazing changes, whereas the first time you speak to them, they can't put two words together because they're constantly crying and constantly feeling not good enough. They have such low self-esteem, don't believe that anyone will ever treat them with any kindness or love to then suddenly being in an amazing relationship. I had a lady that contacted me and I think about five years, she said, I don't know if you remember me, but so and so and so. And I just want to tell you, you were right. I'm just moved in with the most amazing man and I feel so safe and he's just so caring and life is just so beautiful. And I just wanted to let you know that it can work out. It just brought me to tears because where she was when I first saw her was so so different oh my goodness that's beautiful I love that and that's the outcome I want for everyone is to come back and say absolutely this helped this worked I'm in this better place I don't have all of the crap that I came to you with <laughs> and I have all the good stuff now that's my hope and wish and dream and the work that we yeah. do together thank you for being so open and honest in this conversation I appreciate it and so please if you don't mind Tell everyone where they can connect with you. And of course, all of it would be confidential if it is someone that is struggling in this particular area. But I know that you work in other areas and anxiety and stress and trauma. You're a trauma specialist and all kinds of trauma. It doesn't have to be sexual trauma. But uh, let them know how they can find you, please. And of course, if you want to find her, the information is going to be in the show notes. And if for some reason you have any issues, reach out to me. I'll find her for you. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so and my website is Zanzai. No more dot world. So you can contact me through there or anxiety no more nz at protonmail.com. And just flick me an email if you've got any questions or I work online over Zoom and which is why it's dot world because obviously this happens everywhere all over the world. And if you've got any concerns over hypnotherapy or trauma therapy over Zoom, don't worry because if the Zoom does drop out, if the the internet does drop out. I always put in there to the subconscious mind that if we lose connection for any longer than a minute, then you'll automatically come out of that relaxed state and you'll be able to reconnect. So it works really well. And I've just had a testimonial actually from a lady that I can't release it yet because she's on witness protection, but saying that Zoom has worked really, really well for her. Um, she's in the UK and yeah, it's going to help her with her upcoming court case because it's a pretty terrifying thing to have to do. And so again, it's just giving her the strength and the resilience to be able to to do what she needs so that the people get justice and again it's just giving back my whole philosophy is I want to give you back the power I don't want you to feel powerless anymore I want to give you back the strength the resilience and the power that you rightfully should have to be able to stand up and say no and to demand the respect that you deserve and the safety that you deserve and to know that you can do that nobody has a right to take that away from you absolutely agree with that 10,000 times percent, 10,000 whatever. I agree with that wholeheartedly, all of what you just said. And I think it's amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Change Gang, if you need to share that with someone, please take the time to share this with them. If this is for you, reach out, absolutely, and have more conversation. I hope that it's been informative to you. And I hope also that you meet me right here, same time, next week. I hope today's episode was interesting and helpful to you in some way. If so, find someone to share it with. Maybe it will help them too. If you'd like to know more about anything discussed here today, you can find all the places to connect with me and the guest speakers in the show notes. Or go to lauraordeal.com, L-A-U-R-A-O-R-D-I-L-E.com, and you can reach out to me there. Until next time... Ask when you need help, be kind to yourself, and have a happy day.